Well, hello there again. Thank you for checking out this episode of Raised on the Radio. I'm one half of this show. I am Colt Brocato, my good friend and good friend, Patrick Blair in Zoom land, as usual. And sir, your background has changed. Thankfully, it only took uh, several months, but yeah, I finally have my office back. I finally have my man cave back. I It's all fixed. Everything's good. Like what was like, so you got to sit in your basement last night and watch the fights again. Like, what was that feeling like? Can you describe it? <laughs> oh, it was, it was exhilarating. It was, it was great. <laughs> Cause I, I actually texted you yesterday and I said, you asked me if I was watching the fights and I said, I doubt it. Um, and you were like, well, my basement's back. So I'm definitely watching the fights. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Had to do it. Had to do it. Are you, uh, you botched the fact that we're good friends. Are you sure we're good? Are we on, are we on good levels right now? Because in the podcast world, things are falling apart for a lot of people. So I want to be sure that we're good. The business is still intact. I don't need to ask for any accounting numbers or figures. We're good. I I think me and you are okay for the moment. Uh, when we call each other out on each other's bullshit, we enjoy that. (laughs) So you think that helps? (laughs) I think it does help us at least apparently not others. Yeah, it's it's bad to go into business with your friends, man. You gotta be careful. Yep. Gotta be careful. Yeah. So it's a you good know thing more we started this when we didn't know each other that well. Like you didn't know my hatred for ketchup. <laughs> you didn't know that I hate that you didn't know that you were super white for not having tried chicken and waffles ever. Like it's true. Learn. What were you gonna say? I think I cut you off. I don't know. I've just learned a lot about myself through the process of this show. I'm really? not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. There was some condescension in there. Are you being serious? <laughs> uh, I don't. Eh. Sure. Maybe. Uh-huh. Maybe a little. Whatever bit. makes you feel better. Mm-hmm. Well, <laughs> I, I mean that's fine. I, I mean, if you have, that's good. I don't know if I have. You're not. <laughs> I've learned that you're white and you live in the woods. And okay, that's about all you really need to know about me. There's do, not you much, do white people shit. There's that's really fine. not many layers. Like that's about as far as it goes. To be honest with you. No, you can be an onion, man. You just gotta, you gotta tell me how to tell me how do how do I cut it? How do I peel it? You know, there are different ways. Clearly, you're you're not a regular situation. Yeah. No, in the uh, in the podcast world here, man, things are falling apart for people, and it's interesting to me. So, um, I think I sent you something about the fighter and the kids with a Z podcast already falling apart. Someone's already been fired. Right. Malik B, I think, is what he goes by. I was not familiar of who he was until seeing clips of that show and seeing him on it. I guess he's stand up and he was uh, I have seen him in film stuff. He was in the movie Creed. Really? And when I okay. saw him appear on that show, I go, oh, that's that dude that was in Creed. Like I recognized his face. I didn't know who he was. I didn't know his name, but it's like, oh, that's that dude in Creed come to find out he's a stand-up used to be a boxer still trains that's how he got in there I, I, I don't i don't i don't know his whole backstory but apparently he got fired or let go or was told to walk away however that fucking show works so is brian callum back on the show what is the deal is that a business did, or what how, what is that i did see that he was i guess on an episode though right just an episode or has he been on multiple he's been on a few now so he well, I mean, I'll get to that in a second. So the, the, he, the idea was like the fans immediately go, well, where's Malik? Why is Brian back for good? Because I'll be honest, if you, if you pay attention to social media at all, I don't get on Reddit. Like I know there are Reddits and this is where all trolls and fans go and just fight all day. I don't do it. It's toxic. I can't do that to my brain, but I am on social media. But even on social media, you can kind of see that he was the fan favorite of that show. Yeah, I think it's sure. fair to say. But how, how weird would it be if if we went through all of this just for it to go back to Fighter and the Kid with just Brennan and Brian? Well, I don't know if we necessarily went through all of this on purpose. I don't think he wanted women to accuse him of sexual yeah. misconduct. But I, I, I understand that, but that would, I'm just saying that, that would be a weird end result for it to just come back around to being <laughs> this. But to where it was just like Callum was out of the, the light enough for long for long enough for everything to die down and then yeah. come back around to be able to do it again. I wouldn't be opposed to it, to be honest with you. I think it would be the best end result for the both of them. Yeah, for sure. 100%. Because I don't know if you've tried listening to Brian Callen's other podcasts with either Sam Tripoli or Steve Byrne, but it's not great. Well, look, 
I, I'm not going to say that they're not great. I, it's just conversations that I'm not necessarily that interested in. For starters, mm-hmm. I'm not the biggest Brian Callen fan. Gotcha. I think he's very full of himself in a very odd way. I'll give you an example because you'll yeah, know but, what I'm but, talking about. Okay, but before you get to that, it doesn't it seem like he he does that in like a kind of a a playful way though? No, that's you what I thought at first. You, I was. You think the same it's all way. real ego? You really I do. do. I do. Okay. I think he needs the reassurance and in, in 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 validation from other people to feed okay. his own ego. But I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about because you'll know what I'm talking about because you've watched the fight companions. Yeah. Do you remember there was a trend on the fight companions when it was those four guys? So Joe Rogan, Brian Callen, Brennan Schaub, Eddie Bravo. Brian Callen yeah. would always be late because okay. it would always be a thing that happens. Like, oh, he's here. Whoa. Every time. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That makes he sense. He wanted that. Bitch, yeah. you weren't late. You just wanted that. That's your okay. thing. Okay. And I think eventually it wore thin on everyone. They were like, okay, hey, we get it. Here he is. You could tell. Like, Eddie Brown was like, all right, motherfucker, sit down. I was in the <laughs> middle of a fucking story. Like, <laughs> you know? Yeah. That kind okay. of stuff is just gross to me. So I, that's why I'm not necessarily the biggest fan of his. It, it, you know, can he be funny? Sure. Um, but there's just, just this, this, and he likes to talk about himself a lot. Like, he, they would like watch videos of themselves on that show. That, that show just got weird to me. When I first discovered it, I was like, okay, they have fighters on here. They have other people that I know. Okay, cool. I'll, I'll watch that. I think the first episode I ever watched or listened to was when they had Tom Segura on. And this is 2016, maybe. So I was just discovering then who Tom Segura was. I quickly became a fan of his stand-up. Let me check this out. Oh, um, I was like, okay, I like the show enough. This is fine. So I, I would I would listen every once in a while, but it just became this weird ego battle. I don't think the two of those guys like each other. I don't. I mean, th- things might have <clears throat> might have changed, but that seems like if the end result is going to come back around to where they're together again, and it's just them doing the show, that seems not like the best route to go if there really is some beef between them behind the scenes or they're not really that big of fans of each other anymore. I don't know that they ever were. I don't know that they were ever that, like that close of friends. I think they were sort of thrust into this situation and made a business decision. And I think, I I don't know. Well, 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 speaking of the, like speaking of that crowd of comedians and stuff and podcasting and all that stuff, is podcasting getting out of freaking control now? I, I mean, we have... I think it has been already for... I mean, it, it has, but it's like... It feels to me like comedians, a lot of big-name comedians, are just adding podcast after podcast after podcast to their resume. And I don't feel like I'm getting any different content from any of these other, these podcasts. It's like all no. the same shit and all the same stories, just talking to different people about it. That's what I said to you. I go, when yeah. at, what, at some point you as a fan, I'm not saying you specifically, but you as a fan need to go, I'm not buying into this shit because this is just a cash grab for the person. It's not yeah. anything different than what yeah, Tom Segura has a new one called Tom Talks or something. Yeah. That's supposed to be a play on TED Talks. So, you, but it's the same. I don't know. Uh, Brendan Schaub has, has, has a different one now, too, where it's not below the belt. It's not like an MMA based one. It's just him giving us his thoughts on things, which is the last thing the world needs. Oh, he's doing his own solo now? Because it's yeah, like, it, yeah, no, no, he's been doing that, but it's not a fight. Ba- it's not like a combat sports based show. It's just him. Is he still doing the one with Theo Vaughn, that King of I, the Sting or I'm whatever? I'm pretty sure. I haven't seen. I, I Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, it's just a cat. It's it's ridiculous. It's just a cash grab, in my opinion. I mean, I guess I guess they feel like they're pulling in fans or audience from the uh, whose fans are of the other comedian that they're that they're doing these shows with and stuff. But that's just and, and like, man. Well, look, I understand that a lot of these guys aren't working right now because it's still it's still difficult to go out on the road and do stand up. Now, some people have said fuck it, and they have been for quite some time. So the whole narrative that, and I, I, I'm speaking to this in general, 
you know, I was talking to someone recently about the, these people going on the news and saying, I can't find workers. Where, what part of the country are you in? Right. Because around me right now, everything's fucking busy and everyone's working and everyone's living their life, their lives. Well, but, but that see now, and I'm telling you like in areas around me, which they can't I know, find workers. I know it's not city. They can't find workers. Like because been, people just want to sit on their asses and collect yeah, unemployment. That that is a thing. And I've you know I I know I know that there's an argument on both sides of that. And I and I've listened to both arguments and I agree with both sides of it. But there is a legit uh, situation where there's been businesses around me closed down for week for a couple of weeks because they didn't have the workers to be able to keep the business afloat for all because with things opening back up and lo- the restrictions loosening, people are getting back out again. They're getting in bars. They're get they're, they're going out and hanging out again. And they, you know, th- th- there has to be staff in these places to be able to handle all those people. If not, you're just going to have a bunch of pissed off people who go in and don't have good service. And then they don't come back. Those people existed before the pandemic, but I, 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 I get what you're saying, but my whole point yeah. of saying that was, this whole narrative, like, I can't get work. I can't work. We got to stop. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you yeah. can. You've yeah. just found a more convenient way to stay afloat. Or in this case, get a cash grab. You know? Yeah, yeah. Um, so the whole idea that, like, oh, comedians can't work. Who was I just listening to? Uh, well, here's another one. The Bill and Burt podcast. Why do you both need to do a <laughs> podcast together? You, you... Burt Kreischer does his own podcast. He does a podcast with Tom Segura. Now he does a podcast with Bill Burr. And it has not like it's new. Real quick, real quick though. Is that a, still a podcast? What? Is Two Bears, One Cave still a show now that Tom moved to Austin? I don't know. I don't know if they're doing it through Zoom. I didn't I even think I, about that. But I, I've also forgot Tom, that he moved. Tom just moved. Um, <laughs> so, and, I, and I'm pretty sure I've seen on social media that somebody else filled in on two bears, one cave the other day. I think it was Ryan Sickler. Yeah. I, okay. I did see that. I didn't pay attention. I didn't watch, but yeah, you're right. So I don't know um, if maybe they're going to try to do it through zoom. I mean, Bert and Bill have been doing it through zoom for quite a while. Yeah. Yeah. It was funny. I caught, I caught a clip. And again, you probably ask like, how do you have time to watch all this stuff? Again, I spend a lot of time on the toilet. I have a child that I'm constantly like, <laughs> He's doing his baby thing. It gets tedious being on the floor, talking baby talk to your child all day. So you kind of need a break from it. So anyway, I caught a clip of those two talking and, and, you know, Burt Kreischer's in Serbia filming his movie or whatever. Oh, okay. Uh, So the connection was terrible and they still put it out. Yeah. I've Uh, seen it. It's not good. I was like, guys. So again, cash grab. As long as you get that read in for that for that ad read in it's fine no yeah. it's not fine you're cheating but anyway um fuck man i forgot why we even started this conversation but so like the oh god what were we just talking about i mean we moved on from shop to uh, just comedians um, putting out a lot of podcasts <laughs> yeah damn it tom segura moving oh moving yeah um i find it funny I have friends that live in California and they have verified everything that we're hearing from these LA based people about how bad California is right now. They look, and these are just regular people. They don't work in Hollywood. They don't work. They just, they're regular people that live in LA. Okay. Um, They, they, they have said, yeah, it's, it's really like that. I mean, is it a little bit exaggerated and put on for the sake of content and entertainment? Sure. But no, it, it's not great here right now and i haven't been out there since 2018 it was 2018 i guess you say really like that what do you mean by that uh like the whole fucking place being shut down and not only your business is shut down but you know the whole city's overrun with homeless people and homeless camps and well i was that was gonna be my next point is like i haven't been there since 2018 and I had to go check it out. I was like, I got to go check this out. I just want to see what it's about because all I heard was people talk about it. Anytime I would go there before, I would kind of stay in the West Hollywood area. Wouldn't really see it. And it was bad then, but apparently it's like 
astronomically worse since 2018. So, wow. but anyway, my point is the, you know, the people that I know that live out there, they have verified that. Yeah, it's bad. We're not going to move because we moved here for a reason. Like we're just not going to relocate because of it. You know, they said if, if the governmental policies or procedures sort of stay the same, that might inflict some sort of change as far as they're thinking of living there. But uh, yeah, they've verified that. But it's funny, like a lot of these guys are saying, yeah, we've been thinking about moving for the last 10 years. I'm like, of course. Yeah. Uh -huh. you? Right. Now I say all the time, I'm thinking about moving because I don't like the city that I live in. <laughs> that's, that's a different thing. Yeah. Um, there are many things I can't, cannot stand things. I love about it, but things I cannot stand about it that do. I, I welcome, welcome the opportunity if it's the right place, right situation. And we have twice come very, very close to, to relocating to different, different big cities. And it's just the opportunity to, we just, we kind of reassessed and, okay, it's not, it's not, not the right time, not the right thing. Um, but we're very close. I think in retrospect, I look back on one of those and I go, we should have just fucking done it. I think we should have <laughs> just done it. Um, and just, if we had to move back, we move back, you know, cause this yeah. is home, but, um, anyway, that was a long time ago, but, well, uh, I mean, you know, you mentioned, you mentioned a while ago that some of them are saying they've been talking about moving to Austin for 10 years now or whatever, you know, Rogan being at the forefront or being an influ influential guy to all his friends as he is, you know, of course he's the first one that actually packs up and moves to the Austin area, you know, 10 years ago, Austin wasn't from what I've been like, from what I've read, Austin wasn't thriving like it is now in what Rogan thinks they're going to turn Austin into, you know what I mean? Like he's made that comment a couple of times about, that basically Austin's going to be the new LA as far as thriving comedy and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I don't buy it. I don't see it. It's going to be the new bubble that Which, ultimately LA was for he and his circle of people. That's all yeah. it's going to be. That's yeah. all it is. I just, wonder, I just wonder how many people are going to end up still, still moving there. I don't see Brendan Schaub moving there because he's ingrained in LA. Like that is Brendan Schaub. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, he's he a hard could, person I to. It... I, uh, if he did, he did. I, it's, it's, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I, well, I mean, so many people have moved there. That's fine. And look, if they think it's going to be a, a a good center to start doing stand up again, I mean, look, it is their fucking job, dude. So if you have a better yeah. place to go do your job, not only do it, but do it in the sense that it's financially keeping you stable again then yeah I, I i don't blame them but again we're talking about a guy who lives in a bubble you know yeah so he thinks he's just going to start this comedy club he's just going to turn austin into the new la and everything's going to be peachy it's like well okay for you sure austin's been thriving for many many years yeah. they still don't have the infrastructure to handle all the people that have been moving there before the pandemic I go there often and dude, they, they don't, I mean, you get in, you get in an Uber, you talk to people who have been living there their entire lives. I had an Uber driver, sort of God drove me to, I went to, I was staying there, maybe their midtown. I don't know. I, I'd have to ask him again. I know what it's called, but it's not going to mean anything to you because you, you don't go there. But so I was staying in this area and I had to catch an Uber to the other side of town to go to a show. And so it's, it's a pretty good drive and it is just completely different parts of town. So the guy that picks me up, picks me up, he's in a suit and we're just chatting. Cause I like to riff with my Uber drivers and which sometimes gets me in trouble. I'll tell you <laughs> that story later, but so, um, probably why I don't have a 5% rating as a passenger on Uber, but again, we'll get into that in a minute. Yeah. That's fucking weird. Right. I swear to God, I've never done anything wrong. Anyway. But he's, we're just chatting and uh, he's like, yeah, man, uh, I'm actually, I live on that part of town. You're going to be my only ride. I just, on my way home from the office, I pick up a, a passenger and I take him to that part of town. And then I go home. I go, is that really worth your time? He's like, it's on my way home. And I got to sit in traffic. I got to do this every day. And I was like, well, what do you do if you don't mind telling me? He goes, I'm a financial advisor. 
And I go, what? He goes, yeah, I'm a financial advisor. And I go, so you, you're a financial advisor. And I go, don't get into details. Like, don't tell me who you work for, but so you're a financial advisor and then you do Uber on the side because it's Austin, man. I have to. And I was like, so then we start talking about Austin more. Right. And I, I, at this point I had been to Austin several times before, and I've had the same conversations with people, but I wanted to get his per his perspective on it because that's a, it's an odd situation to me. Mm -hmm. Uh, Maybe he's bad at being a financial advisor, but so he was just like telling me about how long he's grew up in Austin, went to college there, hasn't left, never even thought about leaving, still doesn't think about leaving, but he goes, yeah, the city has changed so much. So many people move here in droves every year. The city cannot handle it. They just can't handle it. So it just had me, and I always think about that conversation when people like Joe Rogan talk about moving there and and changing Austin. How do you think the city feels about that? Uh, Does it it drive revenue in the downtown area or wherever he thinks he's going to put this comedy club? Maybe. But as far as like telling the world, because he does have a big reach, right? Telling the world to move to Austin because everything's free here. Everything's the pandemic hasn't changed anything. That's not true. Yeah. I know people that live there as well. That's not true. Things weren't just open. It wasn't the fucking wild West. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, So it was interesting to get that guy's take on that. And to just hear that he had to, he just does Uber just because, Hey, the extra income helps tremendously because I have to live in a part of town that is expensive, you know? He's like, right. I just live in one of the more expensive parts of town because I, I couldn't find, I can't drive from wherever, from where would he say Spring Hill or whatever it's called, which are, which is actually a really beautiful place. I recommend everyone go. Is it Spring Hill or is it Bee Tree? Maybe it's Bee Tree. Either way, but it's the, and I'm using air quotes here, the mountains of Austin. It's a really beautiful place to go to. Anyway, he's like, I can't go over there, which is considered like the new place for like, working professionals who already have had a family that's where they go to kind of like retire right i can't Mm -hmm. afford that also i can't afford to drive that far every day and this and that um so he's like i have to live in the expensive downtown part like "Uh, you got to do what you got to do man uh you know this isn't a new story but um so to hear his perspective i always think about that conversation i remember talking to when i was staying there stay at like the you know the uh Hilton garden or whatever. Right. And so I'm at the bar and talking to the bartender there and he, he had four jobs, four jobs, bar, four different bartending jobs. Um, you know, and I, I said, I, I understand. I, well, look, I appreciate the, the hustle and the grind to do something right. like that. Absolutely. You gotta do what you gotta yeah. do, especially yeah. if you have a family and dude, I'm somebody who stays busy all the time. I do tons of different things. Some of them, financially speaking, help me out. Some of them I just do to keep busy, but also they could lead to a better financial situation later. So I continue to do them, but either way, I appreciate the grind. I appreciate the hustle. Uh, but you got to ask, you go, do you have to, or do you really like bartending that much? And right. I, I asked that because I, again, I used to bartend, so I hated it. So I would never work at four different places. Um, I mean, that's the question. Like, if you absolutely love what you're doing and you can get four different jobs doing that same thing and brings in the income that you want and makes you live the way you want and you want to be that busy all the time, then hell yeah, do it. But I mean, that's not me. Yeah. (laughs) You know, but hell, I mean, that's, I guess, kind of the same thing as podcasting is what we're talking about. These guys love podcasting and it's an income. So why not just, do eight of them. Uh, correct. And it took us forever to get there, but yes, you're correct. But at some point, again, <laughs> as, as fans, you got to go, you got to give me, can you give me something else? Right. Like if we started a raised on the radio 2.0, but the format stayed the same. Right. Ooh. But so it's interesting though, because you say they like, they love doing podcasts. Do they? I, okay. I, yeah. No, no, I'm asking honestly. I'm no, asking look, honestly. I, 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 Do I don't know if they I don't love know, doing it. I don't know if they love doing that many. I think that they, at least at some point did love doing it because 
at when they these podcasts started, they weren't we weren't in this we weren't in uh you know a pandemic. They were doing this and making good money before yeah. the pandemic started. So they were doing it because they liked it. Now it now it could be more of a cash grab. I don't I don't know. Here's the reason I ask. So the fighter and the kid had Adam Carolla on uh the other day. Okay. And I may come as a surprise to some people, but I do like Adam Carolla. I do too. But the reason that I like him is because his opinions and, and viewpoints on most things are completely different than mine. I like to listen to people that have different opinions than my own. Okay. Dude, you're, in, a, you're in the minority there. I understand, but I think it's healthy and it's important <laughs> to hear opinions that are different than yours, you know? Yeah. yeah. And plus I don't have to have a conversation with them. So there's no debate. I can just listen in, in my own internal sort of way, disagree with him and then, and then move on. You know, mm -hmm. I think that's a lot healthier than getting into a back and forth with people on social media than fucking constantly going out in public and, and, and being at odds with people because your opinions are different. People are different than you. It's life. But I think it's good to do that. Um, you know, sometimes I turn on conservative news. I'm not a conservative, not even close, but I listen to it because most of the time it's different than the way I think and feel and do things. Um, so I am a fan of his for that reason. There are a couple of other guys just not just like him, but are on that conservative sort of side. And at a lot of times are uh, completely inappropriate when it comes to humanity, if I'm being vague. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, look, you can't just assume or think, you know, that those people exist without hearing what they have to say. That's just my personal approach to it. But anyway, they had him on. So I, I did watch, I did listen. So. He kind of took a – I think it was kind of – it was kind of disguised as a conversation, just normal podcast conversation. But you know as well as I do, Brendan Schaub always talks about how, how hard he works with mm -hmm. the podcasts he does. And Okay, so Adam Carolla gets on, and Brendan Schaub kind of goes, yeah, speaking of hard work, he's like, we're talking to a guy. How, Adam, how many shows do you do? Right. And Adam Crow is one of the godfathers of this Absolutely. whole this whole medium. I mean, he's one of the so he's like uh, he's going through them all in his head. He's talking about my life. I think he does 11 shows a week. OK, damn. but he but he and that's what they all did. They all went, damn. Right. And he goes, guys, that's not hard work. I, had, I talk to Pete. I talk. Right. You know, he's like, I used to work construction and I hated it. And after construction, we would go grab a beer and we would do this. We would have these conversations. Now I get to do that for a living. He's like, this is not hard work. I know what work is, right? Work is when you have to build something or tear something down or lay something down. He's like, that's work. This is not work. And you could tell Brennan Shaw, his, his ego just deflated. They're just pss, <laughs> right there in the room. Like... <laughs> You could tell, but it was a good conversation. Someone needs to say that out loud more, right? Right. I always used to have this beef with, pe beef with people who made music work. You know, is it difficult at times? Fuck yeah, it can be. But if you don't enjoy it and you look at it as work, ugh. you know, I, I never, I don't look at it that way. I look at it as a, but anyway. You know, you know, you know it's funny though, thinking about how you just put that how often do you hear anybody uh, a bigger name on a podcast give credit to all the people behind the scenes that are doing that, that are doing all the audio editing and the video editing and, and, you know, recording the shows and all that kind of stuff. Like those people are working a hell of a lot harder than the guys who are just sitting in front of a camera talking to a friend. Well, to answer your first question, not a lot. They don't mention them a lot. Um, to this, your second point, is it harder? I don't know. Not, I say, okay. well, not, well, not, I'm it's not it's saying it like, is or it isn't, but it's not like physical work, but I'm saying that if, if we're talking about Brennan Schaub saying this is hard work doing four podcasts, yeah. then if that's the case, then the guys behind the scenes are working 10 times harder than he is. Again, I'm not saying they're not. I'm not saying they are. But I would say they're the podcaster's argument. And I'm not making this argument because I'm doing a podcast right now. But I would I say mean, that I am too. <laughs> I, 
I would say that the podcaster's <laughs> argument would be, well, we're creating content. So it requires more, okay. more of me. Right. Okay. I don't know. Look, okay. I can, I can use the music analogy again. I go, I go record a song. I write a song. I go record it. Is the engineer or producer working harder or as hard as me? I would say maybe, maybe, I don't know. I mean, are we what talking, are we, are we talking about the man hours? <laughs> I don't like know how, I, how, I, I, how much more time it takes them to put everything together than it does for you. If we're talking about time put in, then yeah, they work harder than I do. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. But then I guess we're also, you have to think about the time that you put in before going into the studio. But I don't think of it that way because that's, it's all, it's all fun to me. That's the point. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And if I ever, if you ever hear me say that I worked hard on a song, kick me in the dick. <laughs> Seriously. Seriously. Um, and look, I know some people do, and I don't want to, I don't want to shit on people who create things for other people to old. I brought this up a couple podcasts ago. I think like you gotta understand when you're creating something like this, like what we're doing or writing a song or painting a picture or writing a story, you know, uh, writing a screen, whatever, writing a screenplay, like, it's subject to criticism and ridicule and things you don't want to hear. Right. That is frustrating. And for those people that can't handle it or, or like I said, I don't want to be in the room. If you listen to something that I, I don't want to be in. If, if someone listened to this right now, this conversation, I'm not going to be in the room. Yeah. I would leave now. I don't I, want to put, but some people who have an ego mm -hmm. like to put themselves in that situation. They bask in that, you know, yeah. It's not me. I just can't do it. Um, like I, the, I'm, I'm kind of the same way. Like with any podcast that I do, especially the ones that I edit, I will, it, it takes a lot of me. Well, I mean, for one, I have to listen back through the episode, you know, to try to cut out some dead air and to, you know, any, anything that needs to be edited out or anything like that, but I have to listen back to it. And it, it kind of makes me cringe. And it's, it's just because it's the same concept as you. It's not that I don't think that it's good content. It's just yeah. that it's the content that I put out and that, you know, when hearing your voice back is like, uh, why, why do we podcast? Why do we do this? <laughs> yeah. When we first started doing this, you asked me like, Hey, did you listen to the, to the, have you listened to the audio? I was like, no, what are you nuts? No, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, not, but now I have to edit the video. I don't have to, but I edit the video clip. So I, uh -huh. I listened to the whole fucking show. Yeah. Um, so I have to hear myself say stupid things and be a hypocrite a lot. And that's, you know, well, like I said, I'll, 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 I'll do you embrace like, that. Do you feel like you've gotten better with it after doing this show or no? About Listening to myself? Yeah. No, no, no. I don't want to ever hear myself do anything. Well, I'm I, yeah, the, I guess, I'm the I guess worst. You, you did you did music a hell of a lot longer than you've done this, and if you never got used to it, but then I guess you're not going to get used to it with this either. <laughs> I will. Uh, well, look, I, I, I'll say this. I'll start with music. With me, when it comes to music, with me, I don't write and do things that I think other people are going to like. Now, I know that sounds silly. But here's why I'm saying that I try to write songs that if I didn't write them and someone else put them out, I would listen to it. Does that make sense? Okay. Does that, does that make sense for real? Yeah, it does. Yeah. So have I in a room by myself listened to my own music? Yeah, absolutely. I don't want to listen to it with other people, but yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Because I've written songs that I, as a fan of music and just as a lover of all things catchy and, and rock and roll and hip hop and heavy, so, okay. I, so when, I listen when, to it. When you write something that you know has like a really good hook in it or something, and you listen to that back by yourself, not with anybody else in the room, yeah, you're not thinking, oh man, people are going to like this. It's, it's only no. I like this. And I will put this out because I like this. Yeah interesting uh i don't want to know if people are going to like it because they're probably <laughs> not and then it's just going to destroy me and i don't 
I know that sounds weird, but I know other people feel this. Well, way too. the, the only odd, the only odd thing about it is that you you just said people will destroy you, so it matters to you that people if people like it or not, but you're not making it for other people, so that's kind of weird. No, 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 no. When I say destroy me, what I mean is, what do I mean by that? So no, well, look. So you don't mean it's going to actually affect you. You mean like destroy you as in like bad mouth you. Oh yeah. 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 Okay. I see. I see. Okay. Uh, But you know, do, do I want people to like it? Sure. Is it the most important thing? Not really. Look, man, someone's going to like it. And I don't mean that to sound egotistical, but someone's going to like it. So it's okay. Someone's going to dislike it probably more than the people that do like it, but fine. That's the way it is. My whole point of saying that was, is like, if we're having an interesting conversation that I think has value to me, not to other people, I'll listen back to it. Sure. You know, I think when the, the, the George Floyd riots were going on and stuff, I think you and I took a very honest approach to that Mm -hmm. and had some good conversations about that. Um, I listen to those. Sure. It's important. Um, you know, do I listen back to when I'm like talking shit about Miley Cyrus? No, I mean, I'm just doing it. Like I said, it's tongue in cheek. I'm just doing that for fun. You know, it's not, but you know, there are moments. I'm glad you asked about that. Let's, let's get off you and I for a second here. Let's, uh, but I'm glad you asked that about the behind the scenes people. So that was going to be the next. So we never even got into Malik being fired from firing the kid. It, it, the reason that I think, and this is again, just me uh, uh, making an educated guess based on having watched and listened a few times. I don't think Brendan and he got, I don't think he and Brendan got along at all. I think he called Brendan on a lot of stuff on the show and Brendan got super butthurt about it. Um, but uh, I don't think Malik is in a position to, I, I think a lot of people, walk on eggshells around Brendan and kind of kiss his ass. And I don't think Malik was in a position where he wanted to do that. And I think this is, this is where they're at now. I don't know that to be true. That's just my guess, but I wanted to bring up another podcast. So do you know what's been going on with the Joe Budden podcast? I don't, I've never heard that name before. God damn it. Can you stop with your Caucasianness, please? It was Joe Budden. Joe that's Budden. no, di- that's no disrespect to Joe Budden. I just have never. Oh, no, it is before. disrespect to to the entire hip hop community. I can't believe. All right, so Joe Budden is a retired. I'm using air quotes there. Rapper. You know the song "Pump It Up." Maybe pump, pump, pump it up. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. That is Joe Budden. Okay, that's his biggest hit. But anyway, he has one of the most influential and like one of the biggest hip hop based podcasts there is. He was on Spotify before Rogan was on Spotify, their whole Spotify deal fell through and all this stuff. But anyway, the reason that I bring him up is he fired. I don't know if he necessarily fired and I just listened to their reaction video, but two his two co-hosts left the show, whether they got fired, whether they left on their own accord, you'll have to listen to the whole thing to kind of make that decision. Okay. But, um, Ultimately, they helped build the show to what it is today, and they had some money issues, and um, it started way back in 20, I guess, 2018. Uh, So their their whole take is they were asking they had so they went they they didn't own the IP they weren't they had no IP ownership, right? So they had profit sharing the three of them, which is smart, good good way to do it, right? Draft up a contract, we profit share, so on and so forth. Well, they had been for years asking for the accounting, meaning what's coming in, what's going out, because we don't really know. And when they would ask about that, Joe, and this is just what they're saying, Joe would get really defensive and angry about it, call them insecure and this and that. And so their whole take on it is like, look, man, we're in a profit sharing partnership here. Like it's normal protocol for us to ask for the accounting, you know? Mm -hmm apparently when they finally did get it back in 2019, there was a $400,000 mistake that one of them caught, not even one of their accountants. It didn't even make its way to their accountant yet. They caught it. Dang. And when they got it though, the first thing they got when they asked for accounting was an email. And there were five line items in the body of an email, which is 
preposterous. Okay. The second thing Uh they got was an Excel spreadsheet, which again is a preposterous way to get the books. When you're asking for the books, you'd get the books. Okay. Right. Uh Uh-huh. So they caught the mistake. It got fixed. So they've been at odds when it comes to this since they tried to make it work, but the guys kept asking, kept asking. And then what it boiled down to was what they feel is just Joe became a different person. Ego kind of became out of this world. Uh, and they didn't really know what to do. So they, they said it on this, this, re- this react, this response video they did where they're like, we don't know who we were dealing with anymore. Like this guy's ego just got out of control. Uh, he treated us like we were employees when this is kind of something we built together, so on and so forth. But the reason that I'm bringing this up is you brought up the people behind the scenes. Now, I don't listen to that show all the time, but I did. I have listened quite a bit. There are like five people off camera, off the audio that are doing work for the show. And I kind of had to ask, like, how many people does it take to make this show? Because it's not. We'll get to that. Um, But uh, one of the guys. So one of the guys brought up like, yeah. So when we when it came to their Patreon deal. I guess Joe's manager came to him and said, we're having an issue with the Patreon deal. You know, you're making this amount, which we're still going to give you, but we need to come. He goes, you know what? Don't give me this month's Patreon money. Give it to the crew. Give it to the people who, in essence, he didn't say it in these words, but in essence, work harder than I do. That's dope. Yeah. Now, this is what he's saying he said. Now, whether that's true, whatever. Gotcha. Um. But that's why I bring that up. So apparently there were like five people behind the scenes making this shit run. And I was talking to a buddy of mine who also does a podcast. Um, shout out to Will from the three, uh, the Den 314 podcast. But he, he's, he, he will call his, we'll call his show more of a hip hop show. We're not a hip hop show. So he knows more about this shit than I do. So I have these conversations with him and, And I I texted him, I go, man, how many fucking people does it take to make this show run? And he started naming this and that. I go, well, it's kind of funny. After their their Spotify deal ended, they talked about all this money they were making. They talked about all these these things that they had going on. But then the first like promo, like the first show they put out, like the intro video is them hanging out in some like in their in their engineers, like two bedroom apartment shooting darts in this like tiny kitchen. It just seemed odd. You're talking about all these big numbers and all of these big things, but anyway, maybe they were taking a humble approach. I don't know. But uh, my point is, they, they, I guess they never really talked about the guys behind the scenes, but also they looked at it. I maybe one person looked at it like, I own this shit. This is work. So I'm going to control the shit and I'm going to get insulted when you ask about money, when you ask about this, when you ask about that. Um, so I think to answer your question is podcasting get, getting out of control. Yeah, because people are making a real fucking living off of this stuff, dude. For sure. Yeah. So they take it very seriously. Mm-hmm. Um, but in their situation, look, if they really are that good of friends, it's bad to go into business with your friends. It's not always the best thing to do. Uh, they're, they're, I'm sure you know people that can tell you horror stories. I have a few of my own. But as a mm-hmm. as a listener of that show, I will say that it did become noticeable that Joe's ego and his the things that he would say did did change a little bit. I'm a big pronoun person. Here's what I mean by that. If I'm in business with someone or if I'm in a partnership with someone or if I'm creating something with someone, I would prefer that they don't talk about it. They take the same avenue that I do. Like, I just don't want to talk about it. Please, let's not talk about me. Let's talk about something else unless you ask me. So I'm not going to offer up the information. But if they do offer up that information, the pronoun you should use is we. Right. Not I. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been in so many situations where it's I, 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 my me right i'll look at this person i'll look at this person i go what the fuck what is he talking about yeah. you hear this motherfucker you're taking it too seriously i'm no i'm not <laughs> you're a part of this equation too he didn't right. say you he said i that's a problem 
That's a real problem. Um, and sometimes people don't know they're doing it. They're caught up in the moment, but a lot of times, no, that's their ego. Right. Um, and that's bad, but this is what Joe Budden would do. You heard a lot of I, not we. And uh, look, man, if you're in a partnership with someone, that's frustrating, man. That kind of makes you take a step back and go, all right, well, maybe we're not as close as I thought we were, or maybe he doesn't think the same way about this partnership that I do. Either way, I got to reassess and I got to, if this is a business, then if it's not about friendship and it's a business, then I'm going to treat it like one. And if one person's getting offended that I'm treating it like a business, maybe it's time to rethink it. Um. What do you think about that? Because look, this isn't the only podcast you do. You know, this show was spawned from something else. So, I mean, how do you, how do you treat those situations or what is even your, your, your ethics behind it? You know? Well, I mean like what me and you do, you know, in the beginning I was, uh, which we didn't do video in the beginning when we first started the show, but we didn't, I thought we did. Uh, no, we, we talked over video but we never like put out video that needed to be edited to where we could put it out. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so, you know, in the beginning I was going to tackle all of it and you were immediately like, dude, I can do this. I can do that. I can do this. And I was like, I I'm not going to ask you to do it. And there was no ego behind that. It was just a matter of, I didn't want, like, this was a kind of a new thing for both of us. And I didn't know what you wanted like how involved you wanted to be in the backside of everything. So I was just going to do it. I was just going to tackle it all. Yeah. And, and then, you know, like I said, you came in, you're like, no, dude, I can do the video. I can edit the clips. I can do this that, and the other, just tell me what you want me to do. You know? And that was like a big burden off of me, mm. you know, but also when I'm talking to people about the show, it's, I, it's, I consciously make an effort to never use the word I on the show because it's right. not just me. It's both of us. Logic, right? It's common right. sense, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, you know, some and, people don't and, have it. <laughs> you know, and and the thing is, is like I know when you say that that you're not just just saying it to sound good, like because you've made that comment before on the show about Machine Gun Kelly. You've said several times that you've heard him in concert multiple times where he will never use he will never say I, he will say we and talk about everyone oh, yeah. behind him, and that that's why you have a lot of respect for him. I well, yeah. I mean, I I respect that man. Like he's. Yeah. I, yeah yeah i think that's important um yeah. but you know but like going back to what we were saying earlier about like a different like different people or i guess more podcasts that are just talking about the same stuff that would do it just with different people like that's always like for me the network would always is always going to be variety even if i add more shows to the network mm -hmm. it's always going to be different topics with different people doing different things i never want like there may be conversations that are going to overlap each other a little bit but not a whole lot. And right. I purposely try to make sure that each show is like geared towards something else. So you're not just hearing the same shit. Why would anybody want to listen to multiple shows on one network that is all the same shit? That makes no sense. And that's kind of the same concept to what we're talking about. Yeah. Well, apparently people are listening to that because I mean, do you really find a difference between and I, I'm saying this just as, a, as an observer. Look, I'm, I'm, I'm guilty of this because I know I've listened to these shows, you know, but I, I, right. I, I'm also observing and I'm uh, again, like, but like, do you feel that the Bill and Burt podcast is any different than Two Bears, One Cave, other than the fact that one, the one person has been swapped, meaning the conversation's the same, except one time it's with Tom Segura and then the other it's with bill burr i guess they kind of taught because bill burr's personality is a lot different than tom segura's but like look how many times have you, you could turn on a show like that they're just talking about stand-up comedy right well okay so here's my thing is like we've been talking about the bubble uh, as far as comedians go and there's a lot of comedians in that bubble yeah but even though that's a thing i there are a lot of people who like one comedian and don't like another comedian that's all in that bubble right Give me an example so well like I know I'm sure a lot of people like Tom Segura, but don't like Bill Burr or vice versa. Really? You did, honestly, I, 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 I'm sure there is. I'm sure there is. So my, my point is, is that are, do you think you're, do you think you're getting the same listeners for both shows? You're probably getting yeah. a lot of the same listeners to both shows, but you may be getting some different listeners based off of who might like Tom and don't like Bill Burr or vice versa. 
So there's that. But my question is, if do you, okay, I don't know if you've noticed this or not, I paid attention, but do they get a lot of the same sponsors for the same, for the different shows? Yes. So yes, unless you're, unless you really are just doing it for fun and you just want to be able to like with Bert, like unless he just wants to hang out with Bill Burr and talk and hang out with Tom Segura and talk, why not just like go to the same sponsor and be like, dude, how about instead of me doing another show, we just double up on the sponsorship money. Cause it's the same money that the, that sponsors can be putting uh, out. I don't know. You, you don't, know what I mean? I don't know. I, I, again, it's, it's, there's a really funny video out there. Well, and you know what? I'm not even going to talk about it. <laughs> I don't know. Cause no, I'm not even going to talk about it. Um, yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know. I uh, look, do I think Bert Kreischer, if I had to guess, does he like talking to Bill Burr? Yeah. I think he looks up to Bill Burr. You know, I think he, it, it's a, it's a, Absolutely. you know, I, I understand. I'm not dumb. Like I'm not naive. Like it's they're different situations. Like I think he and Tom legitimately are probably closer friends than he and Bill Burr. So it's two different conversations, but Mm -hmm. again, when they really get into it, when they, when, when you get past the first 10 minutes where it's like this exchange of goofy things that have happened, it's the same conversation. It's stand up this, stand up that. <laughs> this person said this about that person who was the producer at this one thing. Oh, I know that. Per- yeah, they, they did. They, like, it's all the same conversation. It's yeah. just, uh, it, it's like, I don't know. It's six degrees of Kevin Bacon. Yeah, I get it. Um, but whatever. Like I said, I, I, I know this because I listen, you know? Yeah. Not all the time. Sometimes. Um. But uh, yeah, the the with the Joe Budden podcast, it was just very. Look, man, I, I I think the business failed because they were friends at some point, and then I think it became business. And dude, I, it's it's it it is tough doing business with your friends. It is tough. Yeah. So ultimately, like the my whole point of even bringing this, bringing this up in the beginning is you know we talk about this as, is it work? Is it fun? Is it a business? So I think like to your question again, is they're getting out of control? Yeah. Uh, because people are making real money. And I think they're, they're, they're seeing these opportunities as real opportunities. And then some people are threatening them, you know, but it's all about, it's all about how you approach it, man. Like if you can have the same attitude, but it is tough, like I said, to go into business with your friends. So I'm glad we're not friends. Absolutely. Uh, that'd be that would be horrible. <laughs> um it's so funny. It made me when we were talking about this, I thought of so one time I had a, a person who will remain nameless and I well, he came up with this idea and asked me about it. And I said, Yeah, it's a good idea of starting a business or starting the you know. I said, Yeah, that's a pretty good idea. Uh he goes, Well, do you have any do you have any suggestions? And I go, are you looking for suggestions? I go, I don't know. I haven't, you just, you just told me about it. So I go <laughs> initial sort of my reactions here, are the things and he goes, Oh, I like that. And he started writing things down. I was like, okay. And then he came back to me. He goes, Hey, I took what you said. And I kind of, here's my ideas now. What do you think? And I go, okay. And I, and he goes, do you, what do you think about this? And I go, uh, yeah. I mean, I think that could work. He goes, well, do you want to, do you want to do it together? I was like, well, no, <laughs> no. And he goes, but, what, but we could, we could make it work. And I think we could, you, you could do thing, you could do specific things and I could do specific things and it could be an equal, e- you know, even partnership. I go, well, let's do this. Let's legitimately come to, come to come together and put together a business plan. And let's talk to other people who can help make it a reality and see what they think. I go, I'm not, saying officially yes this yes to this yes to that i go let's just come up with an actual plan let's put it on paper and let's present it to someone who knows what the fuck they're talking about right so we had a meeting with a person first meeting ever right had a meeting with a person we sat down and this person who wanted to work with me the very first thing he said was i da 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 i da 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 and i was like nope I sat there for the rest of the meeting, kind of was quiet. 
we walked out of the door and I said, Hey man, I think you got it. I'm going to go ahead and let you do your thing. And he wanted all of these reasons why. And I, I go, you got it. I go, I think you're going to be fine on your own. I don't think you need me. Right. And that was it. I mean, that, that was, I go, why I was not going to put myself in that situation. It already right. started yeah. off poorly. Right. Uh, so how did if not to not get into it, but how did that progress? Like with you, is it still going on? God, no, no, God, okay. no. Okay. And people got really upset with this person and they thought he was trying to fucking steal from really? them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It oh, was bad, shit. bad. And, and, and he had already started telling people in the beginning that I'm starting this with, with me, you know, he was starting it with me. <laughs> Uh-huh. And so my name in the beginning was kind of connected to it. And I had to go to people like, hey, whoa, 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 whoa. Like, no. And I think people knew, like, I, you know, because I was never, when it actually started rolled, like, when it got rolled out, like I was never a part of it. So right. I think those people quickly realized like, yeah, I think he kind of bailed. But either way. Um, so I was just thinking about that as we're having this conversation. But um, there's another thing we're talking about all these guys and speaking of another guy who moved to Austin, did you hear what happened to, or what's going on? Have you seen what's going on with Tony Hinchcliffe, another LA based comedian that rerouted to Austin? I don't know full story. I've seen little bits in clips like Brian Redband posted something. I don't remember if it was on Twitter or probably all the social medias um, about yeah. something about edited clips and they had to put out like the full video to really show what, uh, what was actually said. So elaborate. Well, I don't know. So that's what the, so that's what they're saying. Meaning you needed the full context in order to not be upset. I don't know if that's true. So here's what happened. Okay. So he was doing a show, uh, a guy who was opening for him. His name is Peng Dang, I believe. Okay. Uh, if I'm, I think I got that right. Um, he was, he was on before Tony and he brought Tony on stage essentially. Okay. Tony got on stage um, and said some incredibly racist things about the guy. Okay. Okay. Uh, so I don't know if I need to tell you, but Pang Dang is an Asian American fella. I don't know if you okay. needed, needed to know that. I, I, I'm glad you gave me the clarification. Okay. Um, so he said some incredibly racist things about, Asians. Uh, now, the video that Pang Dang posted, he's the one that posted it, right? Um, in the video, it is clear that in just this, this small clip, it's clear that Tony Hinchcliffe was, Hinchcliffe was trying to tell a joke or trying to be funny. Now, obviously, when it comes to racist jokes, a lot of people don't laugh anymore. They're, they're, they're few and far between now because you just can't do them anymore. So he went for it. And I think in the moment, I think people were like ooing and eyeing, and people were laughing and they were kind of in the moment feeling, okay. But once the clip got posted by the Asian American fella with the hashtag happy Asian awareness day or whatever he said, it was very condescending and passive aggressive. Uh -huh. I don't think that helped. And I think as, as one of Tony's peers, he shouldn't have done it that way. Like, I think that was the bitch move in this on his part. But do you but think, anyway, but do you think he was posting it to be funny? No, no, and no. It, and it no. just came across wrong. Or do you think he was pissed about it too? He was, he was offended and he tried to get other people rallying on his side and be okay, offended so, as well. So one more question before you move on. Is this just, um, is this guy, this pang dang, is he just an opener, uh, like for the club? Or he's not on tour, like he's not a tour on tour as an opener for Tony Hinchcliffe, right? Correct. So he's a, okay, he's featured in okay. Austin for Tony Hinchcliffe, I guess. Okay. So they've worked okay. together before. Wow. So okay. They have a working relationship. Okay. So he posted this clip along with this very passive aggressive thing about Asian American awareness and this and that. So as a comedian, to me, that feels like a bitch move. Like, I feel like if you were really offended, maybe you could have talked to Tony, but I still think that's a bitch move. You're a comedian. You know yeah, what he right. was trying to do, you know? 
Mm-hmm. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what I think. It doesn't matter. So people are pissed and they're trying to cancel Tony Hinchcliffe. Um, and I've heard other comedians come to his rescue and say, look, he was trying to be funny. Um, and then they get into this whole thing. Like it's a very scary thing. If we as comedians can now or cannot say whatever we want now, we're being censored, whether it be racist, this and that. Um, but I, let me ask you, what do you think about this? Why should that just apply to comedians? Shouldn't that apply to all humans? They should be able to say whatever they want. And, and if the context is I'm joking, I'm not saying that they, I'm not saying that they should, but I'm saying they can. This goes back to the thing that I hate saying, but it just is the way it is. Like it's, that's just the way it is now. Like I, 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 I 100% agree with you because I should be able to say anything that I want to you. And if you don't like it or whatever, you walk on where it doesn't, I mean, we're not friends. Okay. That's, that's fine. That's, that's clear. You just walk on and forget that I said what I said. I should be able to say whatever the hell I want, but that's not how things work. Now we're looking yeah. to, we're looking to cancel people. We're looking to find the offensive remarks and things so we can cancel people because I didn't like it. Yeah. So I'm not, I, I'm not saying that I want to say or tell racist jokes, but my point is for comedians to say that only a professional comedian is allowed to try and be funny when it comes to these specific things. Not really. Not really. We're all, we're all afforded the same rights to free to, to speech. Yeah. To free speech. So just what? because you're a comedian or you call yourself or you're treated as a professional comedian, you're not mm-hmm. the only person who gets to try and be funny, I guess is my right. point. But um, look, he said it, he did it, he went for it. And, and look, it got a reaction. It got, it got the reaction that I don't know if, if in the moment he wanted that he, he sort of has claimed that he was in the moment and tried something. And I guess now he feels it fell flat. Uh, uh, it, it's, it's, it's weird too, because people also tried to do, well, I'll give you more context. The context of what he was saying is that he was calling the crowd race traders because they're in a conservative state, but it was a very sort of liberal crowd who was just sort of laughing at an Asian's jokes because they were Asian jokes. Gotcha. That was the context of what he was saying. So I think the real punchline there was like, you all are race traders. You're a bunch of pussies. We have to, we can't say whatever we want anymore. Like this and that, whatever. Um, but I think other people are trying to like justify, and this happened when Shane Gillis got in trouble for using that word. They both used the word chink. Um, this happened with Shane Gillis where other people were trying to like come up with different situations where it would be okay. Or would it be, you would you be more offended and like, look, a racist word is a racist word, you know? Absolutely. Uh, so if, if I don't think people are thinking about one or the other one being offended, I just think they're being offended, you know? Right. Well, yeah, um, but then again, go back to what I was saying a while ago, I said that you should be able to say whatever the hell you want. There's a difference there. Like, I don't mean that you need to be using racist terms toward people because that you shouldn't be able to do that. And no, that well, is, yeah, that there's hate speech and there's, can't. there's yeah. sure. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, hate speech is not protected as free speech, you know? Yeah. But we don't necessarily still as society know how to define what hate speech is yeah. and what is not. We think we do. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we don't, I guess my, the reason that I'm, I'm saying this is like people try to build the context where if you're being racist against Asian Americans, it was almost like, well, we used to be able to, but now we can't anymore. Like you didn't used to be able to be racist against Asian Americans. I think perhaps there was a time when you could joke about it more because you could. Yeah. I mean, have you ever fucking seen breakfast at Tiffany's? Right. Like, or have you ever watched old Bugs Bunny cartoons when he plays? So look, uh, do I have an Indians logo behind me? I do. God damn it! Here I am again. Hip. I had to look up. I have a couple. Fuck. Yeah, you might have to, you might have to pull that hat down. Nope, not gonna do it. Um, <laughs> so I get it. Uh, I get why people are offended. I don't, I I guess my biggest gripe with it is, is that dude posting that as a comedian, 
posting that and sort of being offended and trying to rally the troops per se and get them against another person. Right. But other people, like there were comics saying, well, well, he should have talked to him off stage and said that offended me. Should he though? Like if you're a stand-up comedian and someone came up and said that to you, who was a, one of your peers, would you want to be like, get the fuck away from me? But also, is there a possibility that he did and we just don't know about it? No, he didn't. Oh, he, okay. It's been verified that he did not. Okay. He took, he just went straight to social media with it. So, so has, Tony, has Tony Hinchcliffe said anything yet? Has he made a statement about it? Um, I don't think so. I think he's talked to people, but I don't think he's made anything public. I'd have to look. I'm not sure. Ari Shafir is the one that posted the full clip and he's like, we need context on everything. I don't know if he needed to see the whole video to understand that he was joking. I didn't yeah. see it and go. My first thought was Jesus. He really hates Chinese people or Asian Americans. It would take me a few days to sit there and think about that. But we, that, but we also look at comedians differently than most people in society. I think, you know, True. like once, once we see a comedian go on stage, now it's just, okay, whatever set up there is just meant to be funny. It's not meant to actually offend somebody. That's how that's the way our brain works. You know, that's not the way most people are looking at things anymore. Yeah. It, it's weird too, to think about racist terms. Like, you know, we've come to a point now where we've, we've, we, we, we as society have identified what the racist terms are, or what has been deemed as a, okay, this is a hateful derogatory racist term toward this group of people. I think we've, we're all pretty clear on that. I think. Yeah. Or those of us with brains, but only till recently were, were they sort of established as, Oh, by the way, they're also no nos when we're joking as well. You know? Yeah. Um, and I guess that word's probably one of the newer ones. But I do believe in context, but not when it comes to joking. I think when if you're having an honest conversation with another human being that is either educational or you're just trying to be informed, can the word be said? Yes. But there are people who still get offended by that. Like you should just, it should never leave your mouth. Like I just said the word chink, but I was trying to tell you what he said. I wasn't right. using the word in a derogatory way. There are people right. who are going to be offended at yeah. me saying that. Right. And they're not going to understand that I was educating you to the situation. Right. What was I supposed to say the C well, word? They're, well, they're just going to be saying it without saying it. They're just going to need the full context. They'll have to listen to the whole show to know that you weren't trying to be racist. Well, that's a good point. <laughs> Either way. So I don't know. I, I, I well, look, I mean, I don't think it's it, it. So it got me thinking, has Ari Shafir actually been canceled for what he said about Kobe? Probably not. There was some backlash at first and he had to kind of go away for a little yeah, but bit. I, but no. but have, you, have you heard a whole lot about Ari lately? I don't know. Like I, 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 He's one of those guys in that bubble that I don't think is funny. So I don't pay attention to him often. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. We'll see. I mean, t- I mean, this is a big deal, though. Like, Tony Hitchcock was on TMZ. Like, you get on TMZ. Oh, this, really? this is this is yeah. Th- that clip went was on TMZ. So this is like full circle, like pop culture story, not just this little bubble that we we have sort of entered with by doing a podcast and talking about these people. Like, no, this is like a thing. Yeah, uh, I, just, I, don't I don't see. I. I. I could be wrong, but I don't see Tony Hinchcliffe as a guy who's going to come out and apologize for it. I see him coming out and saying, listen, I was trying to be funny. That's what comedians do. We're in a culture now where they're trying to cancel people, and that's just what this is. And I think, if nothing else, this is going to give him more material. Oh, for sure. Yeah, no, it, it is. And that's the whole point, like even bringing up TMZ, like, yeah, of course, this helps. Does it hurt him? Maybe at first. Does it help in the long run? Probably. Probably do it. Let me ask you this though, because a lot of times people say this in defense of someone, if they know them, do you think, and I'm just, and you don't have to answer this just based on what you know about him, having watched him, heard him speak on mm-hmm. podcasts, listen to his material. Do you think there's a possibility that he actually does use that word in real life and feel this way in real life based on his personality? 
just on what you see of his personality. Because look, when you put yourself out there, I don't know. when you put yourself yeah. out there into the public, like we're doing right now, people are going to have a base of basis from just this personality wise for the two of us. And they're going to make assumptions. I mean, personally, and you may, you've probably seen as much of him as I have and heard as much of him as I have on podcasts and stuff. I, I don't think that he does like literally feel that way, but I can uh, see how you could make the assumption. I'm not making the assumption. I'm just, I'm just I, asking. I, when I say you, I don't mean you specifically. I mean the list, anyone. Why do you I, think that? Well, so what, what, what have you seen? Not that I've seen, just heard like, because he's made, he's made a lot of comments, like not, not necessarily comments. He's made statements just on shows and stuff, but I think it's always geared towards trying to be funny. Gotcha. I think. Wait, okay. Yeah. I mean, that's fair. I mean, he's a, he's a, he's a comedian. So I would hope he's right. trying to be funny and not just, right. You know, uh, now, is, there, is there other ways to do that? Or is there other things you can say to try to be funny? Yeah, of course. But there, it adds the shock value, I guess. Right. Yeah. When you yeah. say things like that and yeah. right, right now, race, especially racist terms are shock value. It's like, oh, I can't believe you just said that. Yeah, Not even that, just racist terms, just racial conversations are shock yeah. value at this point, which is, is incredibly sad mm -hmm. because we need to be able to have these conversations if we're ever going to evolve as people. We just do. We need to be able to talk about it, and it cannot be our entire identity, or we're just never going to be. Well, we need to be able to talk about it by trying to find a common ground out of it, though, right? Not, We don't need to be like having com like bad conversations about it, I don't guess. No, yeah, absolutely. But the the bad conversations are going to happen. They're they're yeah, sure. it's inevitable. But mm -hmm. you can't, like I said before, you can't always be upset with people who have different opinions than you. It is possible to coexist with people who are different than you. Yeah, diversity is a great thing. Mm -hmm. We need to be able to embrace it. But in order to embrace that, we have to be able to have these conversations and have to understand that we're all the same. I guess is my point. I'm no better than anyone. I don't, I don't think I'm, I'm better than anyone, certainly not because of race, right. I, you know, mm -hmm. but I also don't want people to think they're better than me either. And when someone thinks that they're better than me, and it doesn't have to just be race, if it's uh, economic status or social status, anything like that, I don't like you. You're right. gross to me then, mm -hmm. you know, and there are people who use race as their entire identity and they use it as they use it to define themselves. And to separate themselves from me. Right. If you want to do that, that's fine. We're, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to listen to you. I'm not going to hear you. If that's your, your only, if that's the only byproduct of who you are and in who, how you coexist in this world with me, fine. But we're not going to be able to have a conversation about it. We're not going to be able to, you know, we're not going to, there's, we have nothing and that's fine. Maybe that's what they want. Right. I don't necessarily want that with anyone. You know, right. I think uh, we should go out and get coexist stickers to put on our cars. You had to take it to a weird place, bro. You said the word and it just automatically clicked in my head. <laughs> Do those mean the same thing? I don't know. I don't even know what those. I've never researched what it actually means. Don't they have the star of David in them? I think so. Okay. Well, we should probably figure out what that means. <laughs> probably, probably, probably should, should probably quit being dumbasses. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking idiot.